Okay, uh, today we are going to have a look at the type of thermodynamic processes. What are the different types of thermodynamic processes and how we actually use them? Um, okay, next one. We will have a look at the laws governing the expansion and the compression of the fluids. Uh, we will find, we will discuss the names of the standard processes. We will have a look at the work done, um, work laws for the closed system expansion and closed system, system compression. And we will have a look at some of the problems that involves the gas and the vapor process in closed system. Okay. Um, I've just put these slides online as well. So if you want to. Uh, access it's on Google Classroom. I will also put the link um, on the YouTube video as well, so you can um, access this video later. Um, the recording is just off the screen, so I'm not recording that one. It just records my laptop screen and my voice uh, currently. Okay, um, let's have a look. Next one. Now, we said if there is a gas, you can compress the gas, but if there is a solid or if there is a liquid, we cannot compress them. They are incompressible. Um, now, if there is gas, you can expand it, but if there is a liquid, you cannot can't expand it without changing the state, which means you have to convert it into uh, either liquid or um, oh, sorry, not into liquid. You have to convert into gas uh, form, and then that's the expansion. Now, there, there is a uh, little bit expansion and a little bit contraction in solid when you change the temperature, but this is not as significant um, to do the work. Only it happened in some of the very specific materials, smart materials, where the solid can... Um, do the work. Change in dimension the solid can help do the work, but it, it doesn't do the work in normal term because it needs a massive amount of energy and it will expand or contract by a micrometer for a meter of its length. Okay. So what we do is we discuss the PV diagram, pressure volume diagrams. These are the different pressure volume diagrams. Now we got the law, we says PV n equals to constant. Why, where we got this law from, we'll discuss that in a minute. Now, let's say the first graph, if you have a look on the first graph, there is number one on the top and number two at the bottom. So this number one, it has a certain pressure, pressure of around four, and the volume is between zero and two, closer towards zero. Now, when this thing expands, you can actually see the expansion happen after that one, there's a mass expansion. But there is very little change in pressure. Initially, the pressure dropped massively, but the expansion is from here to here. This is how much the volume change from, let's say, uh, 0 0.5 to 1.75. But after this 1.75, if you have a look, the volume change from 1.75 all the way to 6. But look at the pressure change. The value of the pressure was, let's say, 0. 0.5 and that's 0 0.1. Pressure change slightly, but the volume change massively. The same, if you reverse the same thing from the two to all the way one, which is the graph on your right side, which is a compression, it follows the same curve. This curve is known as PV to the power N. The N is only on the V, it is not on the P. The P is the volume, V is the pressure, and N, we talk about what N is, and the N has the values. It values will be given to you, or if not, you have to find the values. Uh, depends on how many variables are missing. This one is a constant. Uh, yes, N is a constant as well. And PVN is constant. So if I got the PVN here and the PVN here, they both will give me exactly the same answer. It's on say 60, let this P is 10, V is five, and n is 1.3. I put the value, I will get the answer. When I go on stage two, I got the value of p, whatever, got the value for the v, whatever, and then the n will remain the same, 1.3, yeah? And I put that one, it gives me exactly same answer. The answer 
will not be different. Hence, we call it constant. Yeah. Oh, we talk about that one. Yeah. We, when we talk about we talk about the eta value expansion, eta value expansion, and uh, this and type of dynamic expansion, and then we talk about that one. Okay. Okay. Now, um, compression and expansion processes. Now here, all the compression and expansion process, um, there is a diagram for the compression and expansion processes. It's at the back somewhere. Um, now, we already drawn a curve for the expansion and compression, and then we assign the value of the n. Now, the n is the index. It's called compression index if we are compressing, or it's called the expansion index if we are expanding. Now, we need to find out which, what's the value of the n is? n can be 1, n can be 1.5, 1.3. Usually the value of the n is between 1 and 1.5, 1.3. But in question, the value will be given to you like this. This curve follow uh, the expansion of this system, um, follow PV to the power n, where n is 1.2, 1.1, or whatever. They will give you that one. And then you use that one. It's called expansion contraction curve. Because not every expansion is linear, not every compression is linear. Sometimes they expand, but uh, contract a little bit, and straight away they expand. Yeah. So we don't know how they expand. So we we just someone must have already done the experiment, and they know this system expand and contract in such a way where n is one point three, one point one, one point two. It's called the index of expansion or the index of compression. Yeah. Depends what you do. Okay. Next one. Now we discussed that one. We said um, isochoric. Iso means same. The choric is the volume, isochoric, um, which is constant volume expansion contraction. But if it's constant volume, how we can expand and contract? Okay. The constant pressure is known as isobaric. Constant volume is oh, sorry, constant pressure is isobaric, where pressure has to be same. Constant volume expansion, um, if the volume is constant, the expansion is not going to be, so it's going to be straight line, yes? Yeah. It's going to be straight line, or it's going to be the line on um, the volume process, the volume is not going to change. If the volume is like on the y-axis, if the volume on the y-axis, like, um, Sorry, those who are going to see the video, if you want to go see that bit. If this, this is the pressure and this is the volume. Now, if the volume is five, here you go. This is the constant volume. Because here the volume is five, 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 one, not changing. Thank you. If it's an isobaric, isobaric is, this curve is called isobaric. If it's, that is 10 megapascal pressure, all the way across this green line is 10 megapascal pressure. Yeah. So pressure is not going to change. Um, okay. Now, then there is a constant temperature. Constant temperature, we already done. done. Uh, Boyle's law, PV equals to constant. In that one, the the formula is PV equals to N, but it is actually PV to the power N equals to constant. Uh, but where the N is the coefficient, uh, but the value is one. Usually we don't write one. PV to the power one is constant. This one, yeah, the one on the top, we don't have to write because anything to the power one is same. Five to the power one is same as five. So hence we write it as, PV equals to constant. Yeah, just and it's the Boyle's law. Uh, when I say constant, what does that mean actually? Is uh, let's say um, P one V one equals to P two V two equals to constant. So if this is two, this is 10, the answer is 20. If I change that to 10, that has to be a two. So that's answer 20. Hence, it remains constant. 
then what we okay next one then we have the adiabatic process now here instead of n we use gamma so pv to the power r now r is just on the top of the v it's not on the the p now Adiabatic process are those with no heat enter or leave the system. For example, your coffee cup, yes, properly insulated coffee cup, thermos, they are properly insulated where no heat enters or leave the system, are known as adiabatic processes. Now, R is the is the symbol we use. If whenever you see the R, the not the R, sorry, gamma. You need to identify that as an adiabatic process. So you need to think, ah, oh, okay, R, we are not using N, it's an R, so it's an adiabatic process. So heat enter into the system, heat enter, uh, heat exit the system is zero. So there's no heat entering the system, no heat coming out of the system. Okay, PVR equals the constant. Okay, um, the value for the R, I keep calling it R, gamma, sorry. Gamma is 1.4 for dry air, if it's a wet steam, something else, the value is different, yeah? So this is called adiabatic constant. So the Q in adiabatic is zero. Q enters, no heat enters or leaves the system. Okay, next one. Then we have the polytropic process. Yes. Yes. This this is this this can come up in the pub quiz. So it's high likely. Polytropic process. If there is some transfer, some amount of the heat that enters into the system or out of the system, the process known as poly, many, tropic, many tropic, polytropic process. Then we call the hyperbolic process. Now there's a thing called hyperbola, hyperbola is a shape kind of thing. So the value of when n equals to one, in one of the previous equation, yeah, PV equals to um, PV n equals to the power n equals to constant. If the n equals to one, the process is known as hyperbolic process. Hyperbolic process is same as the isothermal process as well, but it only applies to gases, not to vapors. The reason is because there are different, uh, there's a difference between how the gases expand and there's a difference between how the uh, vapors expand. So that, that's the kind of the reason. Okay.
Yes. And that will give you isothermal curve. Isothermal temperature. And that's what we did in Boyle's law, actually. Okay, the next one. Let's have a look at one of the example. Okay, a gas is compressed from one bar uh, and 100 centimeter cube to 20 centimeter cube by the law. The law is PV to the R equals to constant, yeah? PV to the N equals to constant, okay. We don't worry about it's a R or N because we don't know what kind of process they're giving, but we can find out, but you don't need to. PV to the power N, the, the, that on uh, the power is 1.3, which is only on V, not on the P. So find the final pressure. To do the final pressure, what you need to do is you need to rearrange the equation And then do not put the values until the very end. So you got P1. Let me see, I can right here annotate that one. So you got a P here and a V here, 1.3 equals to C. Actually, if I can get a mouse, Resume recording. So the law is PV to the 1.3 equals constant. Which mean, which mean P1 V1 V1 equals to P2 V2, but I missed something. Uh, that, that's why I said, no, you don't need to worry about that one. It's not asking you what pressure, uh, what uh, a process it is. Yeah, because they give you the law here. TPV 1.3 is constant. Yeah, so I can tell you what law is, what process it is, but you don't have to know that one. Yeah. Okay. Now we got this thing. Now remember this 1.3 is on the top of that thing. What we need to find out. Okay, so this is, let's, let's label the thing. Uh, this thing here, one bar, is my P1. Yeah. And this thing here is my V1. And this thing here is my V2. And I don't have the P2. Okay. So we need to find out this, this P2. So how are we gonna do that one? We will make the P to the subject. Let's make the P to the subject uh, here. So I got this equation, uh, P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Uh, do not forget the 1.3. And what 1.3 is on the top of that thing. Now I need P to the subject. This V2, I can pick it up and put on that side. So let's do that one. Um, blue. Um, oh, no, I can't use blue, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna use a different color, red one. Okay, P1, V1, 1.3 equals uh, P2 divided by this V2 comes here. Okay. So this is 1.3. Now I put all the values. I put all the values. What's the value of the P1? It's just one bar. Do not, you don't need to convert. Uh, what is V1? 
is 100 centimeter cube because the other is 100 cent, uh, centimeter cube as well. So you don't have to worry about that one. And the other one is 20. But this is not 20. You have to just put a bracket here. You have to put a bracket here because it is to the power of something. And that something is 1.3. 1.3 and if you put that in your calculator okay and you will get let me do in my head uh 8.1 okay so you get the 8.1 bar yeah the answer is going to be in bar because i haven't changed this unit into anything so that will remain as a bar so that's it that's your answer yeah okay just going to Okay, let's try this one here. It's P1, V1 to the power 1.2. So you're given 1.2, that's the law. Find the final volume. So you have the pressure one, which is 10 bar. So this thing is your pressure one, which is 10 bar. The volume one, which is 30 centimeter cube. And it's expanded to, yeah, something we don't know. Uh, what? So now the new one is one bar. So an uh, P two is one bar. So I need to find out my V two. So you're going to use that equation, make V to the subject, and then sort it out. If you write it down, and I resume. Okay. So here we got the P1, we got the P1, we got the V1, which is 30. P2 is here and the V2, they say is find the V2. So this is the equation, I need to rearrange the equation. So I'm when I rearrange the equation, it will look like this, P1, V1 over P2 equals to V2. Do not remember, do not forget this 1.2 and this 1.2, yeah? Now, I can do two different ways. Just let's say I don't want to, I don't want to make any error or any rounding off. So the easy way that to do that one is, this is 1.2. I can take this 1.2 on the other side. I can take this 1.2 on the other side. But to do that one, I need to do a tiny trick. When I take this 1.2 on the other side, it's going to be a square root with 1.2. You can do that way. Or, or it's going to be this thing over one over 1.2 and this 1.2 will disappear. That's how it's, then I can put the values. So the V2, oh, sorry. The V2 should be equal to the P1, which is a 10, multiply by V1, which is 30 to the power of 1.2 divided by the P2, which is just one, but do not forget this, this thing on the top, one over 1.2. And then you put that in your calculator and you will get an answer in same unit as the other volume is in. Okay. So the answer we got is two zero four point how much? Point three nine. So point four. Yeah. So this says this is your answer for the um V two.
Okay, here, done. So same thing. Okay, now let's have a look at this question. It says, a gas is compressed from 200 kilopascal um, and 120 centimeter cube to 30 centimeter cube. And the resulting pressure is one megapascal. Find the index of compression. So the N thing, you know, the N on the top, how we find the index of compression. Let's have a look at that one. So here we have to take the logs and everything. So uh, I'm just going to do on the board. Let me just get rid of that one. I put that one to the side, uh, make a tiny teeny of that one. And now we can use that screen. Okay, let's have a look at that one. A gas is compressed Calculate the index of compression. Now the index of compression, first thing you need to remember is what is the law? The law is, uh, this is the P1, this is the P2, this is the V1, and this is the V2, yeah? Uh, let me just rub this one. Okay, so remember, index of compression is on the volume, it's not on the pressure. So we need to write this equation first, P1, V1 equals to P2, V2, and the N is on the top of the V1 and the V2. Then what I need to do is the question is asking me to find the N. To do that one, I got the P1 over P2, equals to V2 over V1, how I got from here to here, how I, what I did, this is what I did. I did P1, V1 to the power N equals P2, V2 to the power N. Now remember this P is multiplying. So when it's multiplying, I need to move that to the other side. When I move that to the other side, it will divide. So it will just divide here, P2, and this thing, P2 from here will disappear. So you got that bit. Now this V1 here is multiplying. I will need to move that V1 on this side. So when I move on this side, what will actually happen, it, it, it's multiplying on that side and it will divide. Now this is this disappear from this side. Okay, this, now I got the V2 to the power N and V1 to the power N, which can be written as, which can be written as V2 over V1 to the power N. Why is that so? Why is that so? Because if I got five square, if you do that in your calculator, five square over three square is exactly same as five over three square. Yeah, they both give exactly same answer. Yeah, so because there's an N on there and I can just put them. Okay. Now, now what I got is I don't need this bit. I do not need this bit. So let me rub this bit, all done. And this is what I got. So if I click here, let me see if I can just bring these things closer. Okay. So, oh, and, and oops, sorry. There you go. And Zach, yes. Now, what I want to do is I want to find out the end. Now here where the scary maths comes. Um, so um, let me, um okay it's not gonna fit here so i'm just going to duplicate new slide i'm just gonna enter one new slide here and i just put a dot here and a dot here so i got empty space 
and I clear the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now. Now what I got is I got I got I just gonna go back to my previous one just to um show you where I got the thing. So I'm just gonna get this bit, yeah, P1 over P2. So I'm just gonna write the same thing. I got the P1 over the P2, which is equal to something in term of volume and to the power n. And that's had volume two was here and the volume one was here. Yeah. So just to show you, I just copy and paste it that bit. Now I need to bring this end down. You can't just bring this end down. To do that one, you need to sort something out. You need to actually do the logs on both sides. Now, what is log? Now, log, um, up to you what kind of log you do. You can do natural logs or the other one. So here you're going to take logs on both sides. Uh, you're going to take log on this side. And you're going to take log on this side. Now these are both in your calculator. It's called LOG. So that's what we are doing. Oh, sorry. Can I just change the color from blue to something else? Um, black. Okay, now, now to do the log, that one is okay. I can do the log of P1, P2, that's fine. Now, what will actually happen here? The rule states this. The rule states the N should come in the front. If there's a log, the power comes up and then it's a log. That's the rule of the log. Uh, who made that rule? I don't know, but the guy who did that one is dead. So you can't ask him. So, so let's do that one. So we just follow that rule. Um, yeah, yeah. So we don't know. There's a reason, but obviously it's a, it's a maths rather than the thermodynamics. So, yeah. Now I need, I need to find the end. Yeah. What is this thing doing? This whole thing. What is this thing doing with the N? Oops, sorry. Control Z. What is this thing doing with the N? This dot, which I put, it means it's multiplying. Yeah, so I can pick that and divide that one. Yes. So on this side, I just put the log P1 over P2. Sorry, that, that is a P2 divided by, can I call this one a box? Equals to the N. Yeah, I don't understand. Okay, now what's the value of the P1? Let's put the values here. What's so? So I'm just going to put the value uh, 200 kilopascals. So it's 200 times 10 to the 3. And what's the value for the P2? Yeah, 1 .1 Divided by what's the value of the V2? And uh, V1, please. And you put that one, and that will give you the value of the N. Uh, anyone got the value for the N? Yeah, two decimal places is okay. <laughs> Recording. Bit. Okay, so the answer is here. So that's the solution. Um, there are some more gas laws and the index, so that that's another way of solving this bit. So you can actually have a look at that one, and another way of solving this one. Now there's a gamma, so you can say like that's kind of an adiabatic process. This is just a conversion. You don't need to know like 
how I got that one, but you need to know which formula is for which one. If there is an N, let's think that is not an adiabatic process. If this is a gamma, that is an adiabatic process. So that's the kind of thing you need to know. Um, now, then there are some questions here, and I have used a straight formula from there. I didn't like convert, do all the conversion and everything. And then there are a few examples. Um, so what I suggest, have a look at these examples um, and just do these ones um, at, in your own time. Okay.